mm, 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 stay in life. Stay. No, I'm not talking about that. I don't know if that movie has anything to do with staying alive. I don't even remember what, I just remember dancing or something. John Travolta when he was like 10. Praise God. But we're going to preach on staying alive. Do we, are all those gone? I have more. Pray. There's some more right there. How many of you have a couple? Praise God. We're going to get some readers up in here. What, watch to see what happens to your wisdom and your, and your mind when you begin to read the, the wisdom of the word of God. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and go to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. And I'm going to need you to turn off the lights in a minute because I'm going to start off uh, my sermon with a, a short clip that I want you to see. I saw this a long time ago and I've been waiting for an opportune time to use it. But oh man, it's good. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 reads as follows. Wherefore seeing we are also, or we also are comp compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Somebody say every weight every weight and the, and the sin which do, doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Jesus we thank you. Uh, let us take these words that are coming before us in this place. Let it saturate us. Let it, let it sink into our heart and minds. Let it adjust our behavior for the benefiting of our own lives and your kingdom. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. amen. Praise God. Clap unto the Lord one more time. <laughs> Praise God. If, you're, uh, if you love God, you may be seated. If you don't, you need to stand up and really pay attention. Just <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to play a, a clip for you. Um, Praise God. I need that. At least this light off. This might be enough. Let me see here. No, I think I'm going to need... Uh, can you turn off that light? There you go. Praise God. Look at that. Just teamwork. Anybody watch the... Those things called those wonder pets? What's going to work? Never mind. You might not have seen that. I got kids now. Praise the Lord. Pay attention here. Before, before I do that, let me, let me just, I want you to really know what's going on before we do this. Um, we're going to be preaching about some things that I felt in my heart as a result of Sunday service and this service and, and the Bible studies as of late. Uh, there's not been enough people to Bible study. There's not been enough people to prayer. And I know why. So as a pastor, I need to address it. But one of the things we need to talk about is the idea of falling. Now, I don't know if anybody's followed. I'm not preaching. I haven't been following you around. You know, I'm not hiding out in your backyard or nothing. But understand that I know people fall. And I know what causes people to begin to fall. And I know what happens when people fall. So we're going to take all that tonight and, and put it together so that we can understand what we need to understand and, and pick up where we need to pick up and move on where we need to move on. We need to run the race. We need to run the race. We need to run this race. Praise God. This, this, this clip that I have really shows that so powerfully. That's why I'm going to show it. There is a person who was running in a race and they fell. And most people when they fall, I'm preaching in the dark. Praise God. This is cool. Huh? Well, just so you know that Sammy, we were just praying for, he's doing better today. He's doing better right now. He's in the hospital. They just got a text. He's doing well right now. Um, they did some things. There's nothing seriously wrong. Praise God. You never know when God just steps in and says, hey, I'm going to take care of this. Uh, praise God. That is exciting. It feels good, don't it, Mama? And we don't know. He may have just got better on his own, but it might have been God. So I'm just going to go ahead and thank God for what he could have done or what he might be doing. Because I know, I know my God. Praise Jesus. So getting back to the story, when we fall, most of us, we fall and we, we feel like that's it. It's the end of the race. I've fallen and I can't get up. You know, if you're old enough, that should be funny. 
<laughs> yeah, when they laugh, they tell on themselves, brother. I didn't say they laugh. When they laugh, then they. <laughs> oh, I love having joy today. Praise God. We fall and we say, that's it. I'm done. Uh, it's the end of the race. But I'm here to tell you that when you have a God like we have, it's not the end of the race. It's not the end of the race. Praise God. Just pay attention for a moment and we'll get back to the preaching. You don't, you gotta understand, church. That's for later. You can't have that right now. Praise God. You gotta understand, church. When you're running at the at the rate that those women were running, and at the speed in which they were running, when you fall down, you you can't catch up. Not when you think like we think. In our day. We think I've fallen so I'm done. I, I messed up. She had been training all that time to get to that point. Years of experience training and learning. But you know what? It wasn't about this. You can fall after you've gotten some wisdom and learning and, and, and experience. Just because you've gotten those things don't mean that you are, you are um, fall proof. Don't mean that you are... Uh, immune from falling. Understand that when she fell, it should have been impossible for her to win that race. And for most of us who have the attitude that we have, it would be. It, you wouldn't make it. But when you have the idea, I'm going to get up and I'm going to keep running. I'm going to get up and I'm going to run this race. And I, matter of fact, I, I can still win this race. I know I can. I just got to keep running because if I stay down, I know I can't make it. But if I get up, I'm, I'm not staying down. I don't care how hard they kick me. 
I don't care how hard I fall. I don't care how bad it hurts. I'm going to keep running. Because that's how I'm going to win the race. And I'm not talking about beating anybody. I'm talking about for me, I need to win. I'm, I'm not talking, I'm talking about beating the clock. I'm not talking about beating people. I need to win the race. I need to win my race. And you need to win your race. And let's, let's race together and we can win this thing because through all things, God can get me through. Through all things, God can get me through. That girl, when she fell, she knew she could get up. I mean, fortunately, she wasn't injured. But, you know, uh, she seemed to be the kind of person, even if she hurt herself, she would start hopping. I'm, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get to the, uh, even if I have to get to the finish line last, I'm going to get to that place. But she got up and won. And, and, you know, through the tape, what I'm watching, it was just touching my heart. But, but I want you to see, in case you don't, it's uh, not athletic, it seemed like she just got up and it caught up. You got to understand how difficult, when they are running at the rates they run, that she has to get up, not only catch up, but then get in front. She, but you know what? She made it look easy. Didn't she? Whoop, okay. Okay, I got to catch up. All right, here I go. When you got God, it, it makes us look this easy. It really does. And that's why we need to understand the concept of staying alive. We've got to stay alive, church. Amen. We've got to stay alive. It don't matter. Don't let nothing kill you. We've got to stay alive. We've got to stay in the race. We've got to stay in the fight. Amen. Praise Amen. God. That, that felt good, didn't it, watching that? Should have given you some hope. If I fall down, I can still get up and win. I can still get up and take care of business. No matter what happens in my life, I am going to win this race. We're going to read this again. Wherefore, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. In her situation, the weight was, oh, I fell. And I fell in front of, oh, come on. I fell in front of my hometown. I blew it in front of everybody. These are the people who, everybody come to see me and I blew it. This is my home. These are my people. And I fell in front of all of them. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the hometown. Amen. Jesus is the hometown. The church is the hometown. You can fall in front of us and still get up and keep running. And you might outrun some of us. You get up. See, because when you get up. Uh, see, oh, come on. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to stay on this clip for a second. Because just think about it. When she got up. There's no guarantee that the other three might fall. They can all three fall down. And if she stayed down, they're all falling down. And now she's not in a position to win. You don't know what's going to happen when you, when you got God on your side and you have the home team advantage. You got the home team advantage. You are on the home team and God is the home team. The church is the home team. Listen, you just keep running because you don't know who's going to fall. You might need to take their place. If you fall, you get right back up. I know about falling. I've fallen so hard, man. But I'll tell you one thing that never happened to me. I'm just, I'm just trying to instill this in the church. I'm trying to get you to, to emulate after your pastor. Three years ago when I fell, ooh, man, that hurt. And it continued to hurt for, for months and months and even a couple of years after. Not because of the fall, but because of the ramifications of the fall. But understand one thing that never came into my mind. And I'm not trying to brag on me. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to push this on you. I'm trying to get you to absorb this kind of thinking. One thing never came to my mind is that I could not get back to God. All right. It was never. I fell. I fell hard. But as soon as I repented, I knew where to go. I knew what to do. And it never crossed my mind that I couldn't get up and keep running just like that young lady. And now I've got up and run and run and run. And I'm going to keep running. Because I'm winning the race. The devil can't beat me. And he can't beat you. I'm here to tell you, church, I, it never crossed my mind for a second that I can't get back to God. That I can't get up and keep running. That I can't get up and fulfill what God called me to do. Proof positive. Proof positive. When I saw that, it reminded me of me. 
I fell and I got to get up and keep running. It's almost like the ground was hot. Ooh, I, I got to get up. I can't stay down there. I can't stay down. I've got to get up and I've got to run. I've got a race to win. I'm at the home team. I've got the home team advantage. Praise God. But one of the things that needs to happen is you've got to put away every weight. Her weight was, oh my goodness, I blew it. What's your weight? Uh oh, now I'm, now I'm turning into a pastor. What is your weight? One of my weights was movies, and, and I'm glad that there's such a little weight. Because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to hold me down a little bit, but it's certainly not going to kill me. It's not going to send me to hell. But praise God that that's what it is. Because I, over years I've been working on getting rid of the big stuff. <laughs> Cigarettes, you got to go. Drinking, you got to go. Uh, premarital or extramarital relations, you got to go. Drugs, you got to go. All that's gone. But then after those things are gone, you got to find out what else you got to work on. And we got to continue to work on ourselves so that we can work on perfecting ourselves so that we can be like Job, who was seen as, people tell me, all, oh, you guys say you can't be, you don't, you don't sin. Well, you think you're perfect? Well, only as perfect as Job. Only as perfect as Abraham. Who was called perfect by God. Only as perfect as Moses. Only as perfect as Noah. Only as perfect as God called the people in the Bible. That's the level of perfection that I'm trying to achieve. Because I probably can't go much higher than that. Because I'm not God. But I'm here to tell you church. We've got to get rid of those weights that hold us down. And that sin that so easily just. Poof, I mean it comes easy. Isn't that crazy? How easy it is to slip into sin, but how we struggle to read our Bible. I'm preaching on something. Whoever's not here is missing it. Who they missing something tonight? It's so easy to slip into the sin, the cigarettes, the sex, the drugs, the 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 bitterness, the anger, the lack of faith, whatever it is, just. Just like, like free fall, like, like just dead weight. We just fall into it. But when it comes to reading, oh, re reading my Bible, praying, oh, I got to work and I got to make time to be in the house of the Lord. But sin, whoo, we just fall right into it. It's amazing how it's, it's, it's the, the Spirit is telling us in this word how easily it besets us. If it, if it comes so easy, we've got to be aware of that. That's something that we've got to hear, church. That if you've fallen, or if, if you're falling, or if you're going to fall in the future, which you probably will at some level, don't get all, cra oh, I'm terrible, I'm a loser. I'm, I'm, that's all from the devil. I could never make it. And why go back? And they're going to laugh at me, and they're going to hate me, and they're going to mock me. Lies from the devil. Lies from the devil. Because when people come into this church after they fell, this is all they're going to get. It's all right. We love you. You're going to be okay. It's going to be all right. You can get up and run. You can get up and run. As long as you haven't blasphemed the Holy Ghost, you're all right. If you've done that, there's not much I can do for you. That's why I'm so clear. Don't ever, I don't care if you're drunk, buzzed, high, angry, mad, bitter. Don't you ever blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Don't ever clown the Holy Ghost. Don't clown speaking in tongues. Don't say it's not real. Because in that case, I can't help you. No one can help you. It's over for life. I, I, I say that at least a couple times a year. Don't ever do that. But as long as you haven't done that. You can make it. Now, if you've done that, I can still hug you and I can still try to comfort you for the time that you're here. And, and, and you can still live for God and, and not do the sins and not have a crazy life here. But when it comes to leaving, none I can do. There's no one anything can do or anybody. But understand that we just easily fall into sin. Just, it's just so simple. But it's so hard to do the things that we're supposed to do for God. And, and you know... I'm not judging anybody because I'm, I'm the same way. I've got to, you know, I can jump on the computer and watch UFC, bam! And, and, and no, but, but to get up and make sure that I've done my reading, I haven't been, I haven't been as, as, as effective as that. 
And so I, I don't mind telling on myself. I don't care who judges me. I'm, I'm a man just like anybody else. Whoever judges me, they, they just need to look back at themselves real quick. But understand that this pastor is fixing things. See, I read. I do pray. And the Lord does talk to me and tells me where I need to fix things. Yeah. This morning, I began to pray. And I got to that point of asking for stuff. And I began to, ask, once again, it hit me the same way it did last time, but in a different, different words. I began to pray for stuff. I said, wait a minute. I need to pray for some wisdom. Because the wisdom is going to lead me to everything else that I want on my list. I've got to use wisdom and be wise in my behavior. Just like Solomon. I want to have that wisdom to help where I need to help. Know where I need to be. Know when I don't need to be there. Know when I need to go and know when I need to leave. See, I've had trouble with some of those decisions in my past. <laughs> and having wisdom through the Spirit is going to help me through my life get what I'm supposed to get and not get what I'm not supposed to get. Praise the Lord. Then it says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What word do you think, as well as you know your pastor, what word do you think I'm about to focus on? My church knows me. Praise God. It wasn't the, because you could have said run or you could have said set before us, but it's the patience that just, isn't it just because, see, we need to run, but when we're running, what happens if you just get up and you run as hard as you can run, and it's a long race? <laughs> Before you know, <laughs> I had one guy, I saw him preach. He was a younger, new preacher, and he got up to start preaching, and from the minute he hit the, he hit the pulpit, <laughs> I don't think he ever said one word in any other word besides oh, that, that tone loud. He red faced loud. And it, within five minutes, Jesus, you couldn't even understand what he was saying then. He just blew it all out. I mean, it was that, that inexperience, you know, out the gate, you know, just push. There's nothing wrong with getting excited and yelling, and, but you got to, you know, build them up. And you, there's, there's a procedure, there's a play, there's a way to deal with people that you, he, ah, all the way out the door. Man, we got to have patience. We've got to get a stride going. You know, you know what the, the most efficient gate for a horse is? We've got some, we're in the reservation, boys. Got some riders. What's the most efficient gate for a horse? Y'all, I'm taking your buckles. You guys are done. It, it's, it's a trot. See, running is smooth for us. We want to run because, you know, the canter is called cantry. Yeah, I used to teach horseback riding. What's up? You didn't know. Black man from Boston knew about canter. Yeah. <laughs> and you change your lead. Oh, what's up? Change your lead. I know how to do that on a horse too with the feet thing. I used to know how to do that. I don't know. Anyway, see, the trot is the most, ef most efficient gait. What about when you're swimming? Is it the crawl stroke? Is it the butterfly? Well, that's for people who don't know how to swim. Yeah, the doggy paddle would be efficient for them. <laughs> but if you do know how to swim, what's up? I love your sister. I'm sorry I had to say that. <laughs> I, I, she know, I know her now, okay? I can get on her when I want to now. We close. She's been to my house. We okay. Praise the Lord. I've seen her get the Holy Ghost. She's all right. I hope. I have to talk to her after church to calm her down. <laughs> What's the most effective stroke for swimming? Somebody say it out loud if you're whispering because I can't. Huh? Nope, not backstroke. It's the breaststroke. It's, it's, I used to teach, well I didn't teach swimming, but I took swimming class. I don't know if those part comes in. I don't know if that really, I don't think they really do that, but it sounds good on the mic. And you bring it in, and it's, 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 it doesn't take a lot of energy, but it moves you. It doesn't move you as fast, but there are races in the breaststroke. But it, it is the most efficient uh, uh, gait for swimming or, or stroke. We need to pace ourselves. You know what I, what I get a little nervous about? Is people come to church, and they, and they feel, God, they're so excited. I'm just, can I just preach? I'm, just, I'm having fun. Uh, I mean, really, the, we, we are faithful people. We're here. Um, you know... 
Now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I, I'll get it. Hold on. I'll look at my watch again. It'll bring it back. Okay. When, when, when we're in a position, if I say that word, usually if I start talking, it'll come. So, what was I talking about? I got the, I got the swim stroke. I got the horses with the breast stroke. And I was going to talk about us. Now I really lost it. Good Lord. When some people come to church, I'm talking about pacing themselves. That's what I was saying. They got to pace themselves. Okay, now I got it. When some people come to church, they, they, they say, oh, these people make me nervous. I got it back now. Whew. Oh, man. I hate when it happens. When they come to church and they say, Pastor, I'm never leaving it. I'm going to live for God forever. I'm never going to leave this church. This church is awesome. <laughs> I suspect they last about six months. It makes me real nervous when I mean, and I lo I love. I say, praise God. I give them the same look because you know I want them to feel comfortable. <laughs> they don't think that they're weird. I'm excited for them, and I, but I just but inside I go, oh Lord, I, I wish they didn't say that because they they come in and oh I'm gonna win and I'm gonna teach and I want to do everything. And in six months they're on the street, they're not coming to church and. You know, I like those people who don't tell me that. Now, if anybody here, they're never going to tell me that for sure. <laughs> but, you know, just, just do it. Well, they just do it. They come and they do it. You know, they just, they just excited about it. They don't, they don't complain and they don't, they don't try to do the least amount of work. They just, whatever they can do, they want to do it. Those, those, they're pacing themselves. They come in. They learn. They get a foundation under them. Preachers are really big at this, too. And I, and I probably was like this myself to some extent. Uh, the pastor who trained me actually did a good job of keep corralling me. You know, he always said, keep letting your shoes. Because I'll but just, whoosh, just take off, you know, like those, those rocket shoes, just keep, keep grounded, you know, because I was so fired up and it's like a stallion in the gate. And I just, and he, he did a good job, but you know, we'll, we'll let you preach for five minutes. You read a book on, on this concept that, that's biblical and scriptural, and you can get another five minutes. And you're, you're building your way up, and you're, I'm still here. I ain't burned out. I'm, I'm not out there just talking smack in the street. I'm still in church. I'm still living for God. And I've decided that this is a lifestyle. This is not just a, a, a fad. This is not just temporary. This is who I am. I don't care if I fall or not. This is what I am, who I am. And I'm not going to change for anybody. <laughs> Praise God. That's how we need to do. build up a foundation. We need to be patient. Just figure out what we got to figure out. Learn the basics. Build that foundation because if we don't have a foundation and the storm comes, what happens to the house, church? But we build that foundation. Because see that, oh, come on. I'm sorry. I'm just having fun. We, 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 if you don't build a foundation because you're just trying to get the house up. you just try to get the house up. Man, don't worry about the foundation. Just start nailing it. Stop putting the boards together. Come on, just put it. Now it's up. Yes. Nice, huh? And you wonder why? Because you didn't take the time to build the foundation. When we started this church, I was preaching on basic principles, basic concepts. Get them to know what kind of pastor I am. Let them know what love and mercy we're going to have. Teaching repentance, baptism, receiving the Holy Ghost, love, faith, grace. All those just foundational concepts. And then we begin to build this church. And guess what? Two years later, we're still here. We're working on our third year. We're, two years is done. This is our third year in ministry. We're working on that year. And we're going to be here at the end of this year. We're not going anywhere because we're building a foundation. And we've been patient. We haven't, you know, I haven't got people in here. Come on, you got to be a Christian. Come on, man. You got to dress right, look right. Come on, come on. Yo, you got to read your Bible. You got to bring it. Listen, man, you got to do it right now. Man, they be out there. Whoosh, this guy, man. We, mm -mm. Somebody tried that with you and it didn't work because people end up running away. People have not changed overnight in this church. But I, let me just preach. Sister Betta, I'm telling you, I've loved her and been friends with her for two years. And just, listen, I'm sorry I keep saying that, but you're one of my greatest accomplishments in, in my patience. Really? Because, Sister Betta, I care for you so much, and I, and, I, and I love your fire and your energy, and I want you to be in this church so bad. I'd be like, come on, look, you got it. Listen, this is it. Look at the Bible. Read this. Look at it. See? You know? Well, bless God, we're going to do it again because you got this. It's like, no, wait. Just love her. Be a friend. Uh, be there. Pray for her. Go to her house and see her every once in a while. See how you're doing. 
You know, it's that patience. We're running the race, but we got to be patient. We can't run out and just fall apart. We've got to, we can't just go up to people and just blast them with things that, you know, try to stuff that steak down their throat when they need some milk. They need some hugs and some love and some care. And they need to know that we care for you. And we're not just here to, we're not, we don't want you to want your money here. We just don't want you to fill a seat. We actually want your life to change and live for God so you can have wonderful blessings in your life so your family can be blessed so you can go to heaven when it's time to go. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, I'm done with this scripture now. I don't know if the rest will take me this long, but praise God, that was good. You know what's funny is I just added this scripture and that clip on today. Uh, praying does wonderful things. Just guide you. Guide you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. James 4, 7. Why don't we go there real fast. We're going to now more get into the nitty gritty of what I'm talking about for this church in terms of what's going on. See, we're running close to 100 or maybe more, if everybody came on the same day, we'd probably be in bigger trouble than we were the other day. But praise God, I'm telling you what's beginning to happen. See, and some of the people who need this the most, I'm going to have to actually have them watch it because some people aren't here who need this. But the idea is that I, as a pastor with experience, I know when I see this happening, and I'm going to explain it to you right now. See, the Holy Ghost moves... We've been having steady revival all the way along. Steady revival all the way along. And people every month getting baptized, getting the Holy Ghost, getting baptized, getting the, every single month. Except December 09 is my nemesis. Two weeks. We should, man, we should have never left for that long. I ain't lying. We could have one more week. Somebody might have got baptized. Praise God. Having all, but as of late. That, that building, that, that patience, and the foundation that I've been telling you about has been built to the point where our name is getting out there and people are hearing about us and they're hearing this place has power and anointing and love and mercy and patience and, and, and multicultural, black, white, green, yellow, we're all in here. You didn't know we have an alien who's a ch uh, church member, he's an alien, but th they have the camouflage so you can't see them. So... They're like, oh, really? They really trust their pastor. I mean, oh, really? That's awesome, pastor. We got, a, hey, we got a, an alien in church. <laughs> we got a camouflage alien in church. No, really, we have you know, black, white, Hispanic, Navajo, other kinds of, 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 of Native American. We've got all kinds. You know what I'm looking for? I got to get me a, 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 well, Asian, yeah. And I think, what's his name? Noel looks a little Asian. I got to call him. But we need, um, Someone who is from Islam or what, what's that called? Arab. We need, we need an Arab person. I need to win an Arab. Huh? Palestinian or something. We need to get, so, so we can just cover the whole rainbow. Uh, we need to get a couple Asians. There's only like six of them. There's only 12 black people, like six Asians. So we're going to try to find one of those six Asians. They're all six. I don't care. But we are a multicultural church. We have been building. We have been doing all these wonderful things. Uh, we're getting ready to do some renovations. We've done the parking lot. We've got a bus. I mean, the Lord has just done insane amount of things in the last two years. And now we're building that foundation, the reputation. And now people are bringing whole families. And, and, and when a family comes, they bring their family. And to the point where we had 107 the other day. And uh, it's more like 101 because we had six or it was 104. I don't 104. So it means like more like 97, but we had 85 with about 15 people missing or more. So, I mean, we're, we're pushing 100, church. Now, the Lord is pleased. I'm pleased. You're pleased. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a great amount of joy that comes with that. But do you really believe that the enemy is going to stand back and go, well, we'll just leave that one alone. We'll go mess with these other guys over here who I already have. You better bet your britches that's not what he's going to do. He is going to take notice in panic. Oh! How do I stop that mess? Oh! oh just, it's just too much to look at. I have got to just do something to cause problems over there. And that's been going on for years and it just doesn't work. And there's been a couple of times when there's been big things that have been attempted and big thing, you know, no weapons formed against us shall prosper. Period. 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 <laughs> but don't think the attempt's not going to be there. 
And so what we have is the enemy, and I preach about this every once in a while, especially when we start having revival or, or having increased revival, because we're always in revival. But when we start having increased revival, I've got to remind the church, he's going to try to get you offended at me, and you offended at him, and him, her offended at, uh, oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. That's how their head turns when they're offended too. No, they didn't. Or they, 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 that person's looking at me funny. That is not God that's speaking into that brain. Now, now understand, I don't have that, I don't, I have not seen this happening. I have not heard of this happening, but this is how he works. And many times it doesn't happen because as a pastor, I know that how it works and I'm proactive. I get out there in your own head, so when it comes in, you go, oh, wait a minute, Pastor, just preach on that. Because that thought comes in. I can't believe they didn't even shake my... Wait a minute, Pastor, just preach on it. Let me just go shake her head. Pray, sis, give me a hug. Oh, huh? Isn't that awesome? Ooh, I just feel, I feel so fuzzy right now. Oh, but it's a Ooh, praise God. Let me just enjoy this for a second. Woo. Woo. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. You just kill it. You kill it. That, 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 that enemy will try to dig in your heads to cause you to be angry at each other, at your family members, at your work, at your job, at anybody to cause distress in your life. This is why some things need to be let go. There was something I had to do today. I felt like there was something that I wanted to get done. And I'm not going to give any details about it because it's not, that's not the important part. And, and I don't want to talk about people's business and, or my business and some of the things I'm trying to do. Because uh, I've got plans for this church and for the, for the, for the surrounding areas. Ooh, revivalistic plans. Praise God. Oh, i got plans. But understand today there was something that I wanted to do that was somewhat controlling. And I recognized it as controlling. See, this is where the Lord is at 42, at the golden age of 42. I feel like I have finally gotten some wisdom. Like, like I've finally grown up. Like I, I finally have, have caught up to the age I'm supposed to be because the drugs and the alcohol suppressed my ability to mature. I, I can recognize as this thing that, I mean, it was a good thing. It was something that would be uh, good for the people involved. But I just needed to say, you know what? I just need to turn that idea away. Let it go. Because it probably would have caused some undue stress in my life that I don't want nor need it had I got involved with it and trying to attempt to make that move that I was trying to make that might have been helpful. See, sometimes we have good intentions, but our procedure is inappropriate. And so I had to step back and go, you know what, that is a controlling behavior. And by the way, it has nothing to do with my wife. I don't want people to think, pastor's controlling his wife. Oh my goodness. It has nothing to do with my wife or my kids or anybody else that you may know. Matter of fact, I don't think anybody here knows the person I'm even dealing with. But bless God, I'm here to tell you that it was wonderful to step back from that. And say, I'm just going to use my, my old famous LGBG. I'm not talking about the BGs. You know, y'all going to be thinking about others. I can't even tell you a song from that one. What is LGBG? ahead brother you have won a prize welcome to new hope is right i'm just let god be god see sometimes we try to step into god's position and god's trying to say excuse me let, let, let me handle it and we go no 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 but god no no but that but word is just i'm not talking i'm talking about but me you know what i'm talking about yeah but yeah yeah but no just let god handle it there's some things in our life we, we don't have to be a part of. We can just let God be God. We don't have to be the ones that always are in everything to let God handle some things in our lives. And it, it saved me a whole bunch of trauma and drama. Praise God. And I'm excited about learning those concepts. I'm going to have to quit pretty soon here because I know we're having fun. But James 4, 7 says... Oh, Lord. 
I'm just having fun. You know what I mean? I'm just letting the Lord flow. Praise God. James 4 says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Somebody say will. Somebody say he will. Somebody says he has to. He got to go. He cannot stay. He will flee from you. But a lot of people want to stop there. No, 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 no. See, you got to go on to the next line where it says, then you draw nigh unto God. Uh -huh. See, because you flee from the devil, the devil flees from you, but if you don't get your act right, he'll come right back. Somebody was asking me, you were asking me, Sister um, Amber, yesterday about, the, about the, the spirit who leaves the body and can't find another place to go, so he goes back home. And if he finds it empty, he goes, boys, let's go. Seven more, because this is it. We can, we can have a party here. But if it's full of the Holy Ghost, he comes back and there's nothing he can do to get back into that body. There's nothing, because he goes, that person draw nigh unto God. They got full of God. And there's a, oh, there's a no trespass sign. There's a no trespass sign on that body. So devil, you can't come here. This is, this is occupied territory. You are private property. You are owned, bought, and delivered. Oh, oh my God. You are his. You got a stamp. Say that, preacher. So when you resist the devil, that's not enough. You've got to draw nigh unto God. And then it says, if you will do that, God doesn't just, you know, you know how your little kids in the pool and, and they're, and you go, ha, Huh? Someone say, I got a cruel pastor. Don't lie and pretend like you ain't done that. <laughs> come on, come on. Some of us try to pretend like we're teaching. Come on, come on. Come on, you're backing up and they're trying to come to you. Come on. God doesn't do that. See, when you draw nigh unto God and you're going, uh -huh, he's going, I'm coming, I'm coming. I got, I... You're, you're reaching, you're reaching. Oh God, I'm, I need you. And he's like, I'm coming. Come on, just a little, little more. I'm coming to you. I got you. I got you. Don't worry. I'm on the way. I'm on the way. You don't have to worry, son. You're not going to drown today. Oh, praise God. Praise God. He'll go nigh unto you and then cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We got to keep our minds on God. Don't be sinning God, sinning God, sinning God. Back, no, we're not jump roping. We're not double dutching with the Lord. Verse 9. We're going to jump down. Or it's actually the next one. Be afflicted. Uh oh, here we go. This is for some of us. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Ooh, it done got quiet in here. You, ain't nobody shouting for that. But that's a part of the game, church. Oh, man, I wish everybody was here for this. And I'm going to tell everybody who's gone. They've got to watch this message. Be afflicted. You know what that means? It means you're going to get hurt. I don't know anybody who goes to war and doesn't get hurt. I don't know anybody who goes into battle and don't take a wound or two. Now, you're not going to get killed, but you are going to get wounded. And you know the answer to the Lord, the Lord gives you for that? He says, be afflicted. Uh -huh. Feel, ooh, I just, mm, mm. This is the part we don't like, but I'm teaching the truth in this church. And if we teach the truth, when the affliction comes, we're able to say, I can take this. I got this. Ooh, this hurts. Ah. Oh, but I'm just going to take a deep breath. Praise some Jesus. Lord God, you got this. Oh, I'm in pain. Oh, I just sometimes, I, I can't bear it, God, but mm, I'm going to be afflicted. Uh -huh. See, there's this other places out here, most places, and I'm not judging, I'm just telling you the truth. They're teaching, listen, when you come to God, all you got to do is say the name of Jesus, nothing will ever happen to you again. Prosperity. You're going to be delivered from everything that could ever happen to you. That's a lie from the devil. Sometimes you can expect to be more pain and more persecution and more trouble in your life as a result of the fact that you have chosen the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords over the, the, the Lord of this earth. Oh. Oh. 
praise God, it says be afflicted. It says you may have to go through some mourning. Why? Because it says mourn. Yes. Because it says mourn means that there's going to be mourning. Be afflicted. Something hurt. You lose something. Something happens. You get something taken away. You're afflicted and then you mourn. Jesus. Mourn. You lose a husband. You lose a child. You lose a job. Listen, I mourned my job for about 10 minutes. Wasn't that it's not a reflection of whether I like my job or not. But the fact of the matter is, I don't need to keep mourning. I did it. I, but there was a period I'm like, oh. We had, it was bad, really bad too because first they say you got it and then they say, well, you only got half. So you really don't have it, and which means I, I, my job's secure for a year. Oh, no, it's not. The very next day, the very next day, is my preaching that bad? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> oh, she's going to go count. I'm just teasing. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you, church. There's going to be mourning and there's going to be weeping. It, it's even worse. It, it, if that wasn't bad enough, it, it, it takes it to another level. It says, let your laughter. Now, first of all, this is, oh, you have to let it happen. It says, let your laughter be turned to mourning. So listen, church, there's going to be times where we're like, ah, woo, oh. Did you hear that message? Oh, did we feel the Holy Ghost? Oh, that music was awesome. Oh, the choir sang on the video and we went nuts. And oh, tongues and interpretation. Whoo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's good and fine. And we like that part. And we let that happen. We submit to the spirit we submit in praise and worship we let that happen but when it comes to letting your laughter turn to mourning now we got a problem uh -oh. oh wait a minute god what do you mean what do you mean i've got to go through some mourning yes it's the word of god but the good news is, since you've been preached this concept, and everybody who watches it who has missed today, I'm going to make sure these people look at this, because this is so essential. This is one of the ways the enemy will try to get us out of the presence of God. By lying to us. Remember what happened to Adam and Eve. Eve didn't know the word well enough. We have to know the word. There will be mourning, and you must allow your laughter to change to mourning. We, oh, come on now. I'm going to preach it now. Some, this, this made me feel like I'm preaching at, and I actually am doing that. You don't know who it is, so don't worry about it. But the person knows who they are. I'm preaching at you. We come to a situation where we think we know everything's was, was the way it's supposed to be. And if we feel very comfortable. Yes, this is, I'm just loving this thing that I'm doing. And then we find out that everything that we have taught, we were taught, turned out not to be true. I was taught that this happens to not just the people I'm preaching to in this room, but it happens to almost everyone who comes from another belief system into truth or to salvation according to the word of God. Here we are. Oh, we're so excited. And we're living for God. And then we find out that we haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. And we find out that th that baptism is for remission of sins and not a symbol to the church and an outward expression of an inward faith, but an actual mechanism of removal of sin by the application of the blood of God in the waters of baptism as distinctly given in the Word of God. Now, someone who is submissive would say, well, I guess I got to get in the water. One more time. But those that are not will say, well, I was told and I was taught and this is how I'm going to do it. And I let them do whatever they want to do. Because I've already done my job. My job is to tell them the truth. And if they don't like it, there's nothing I can do about it. But people must take that feeling of, oh, I, I, I thought I knew it. I thought I had a relationship. They must switch it to... I have to let, I, I have to let that go. I have, 
but I don't want to. It's too uncomfortable. And, and but the people that I, I know and love, and I, I laughed with them. I, I, I sang and I had joy with them. And, and now I've got to turn them loose. The Bible says clearly, let your laughter. You have to let yourself submit to the idea of the truth of the Word of God. And yes, there will be mourning. But understand it also says that in the morning, it'll turn to joy. So yes, you may go through a time of mourning, separating from something that you've held on to for so long and believed in. But understand, church, that when you get that power of God through the truth of the Word, and you start to experience what we do here as a result of the truth, oh my goodness, you'll, you'll get a chance to laugh. Don't worry, your tears will be there, but not for too long because you're going to be too busy doing this in the presence of God. Going, oh, thank you, Jesus, for pouring out on me because I've been blessed because of my obedience. I'm almost done. And let your joy turn to heaviness. Listen, church, we're not always going to have all this uh, happiness and joy in our lives. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen to everybody at once. Usually if somebody experiences something here, someone experiences something there, and what that does for the rest of us is gives us the ability to run over there and hold them up. We got you. We, we got you. Come on. Come on. If you fall, I'm going to catch you. The Lord gave me some power. I'm your brother. I'm your sister. Oh, come on. That's okay. I can hold you up until the joy returns in the morning. <laughs> Praise God. We need to stand. I just need to quit. I'm having too much fun, but I got to have respect for your time. I'm going to get into the next stuff on Sunday. We still haven't gotten to peace. You can stand. You can stand. Gary, can you get my wife? Praise God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an altar call. I'm going to give you an opportunity to react through the spirit to what I've preached. If you're going through a struggle, that's okay. Let it happen. And just as easily as you let it happen, let the Lord heal it in the time that he's going to heal it. If you're not going through anything and you're in the laughter portion and the joy portion, then allow yourself to enjoy it. But remember, nothing lasts except God. If you have joy today, don't worry. It's not going to last. You're going to go through your morning periods. And I said periods correctly. You're not always, there's going to be hopefully shorter than, than other people because we have God. But if you're in that mourning period and you're in that broken period and you're hurting, don't worry. It's not going to last. Because there is going to be joy coming in the morning. Just stick with God. Stay tight with the Lord. Ignore all the junk that comes into your head as a result of the lies of the enemy. Praise God. And you're going to stay alive. And you're going to stay alive. We need to run the race and we need to continue to run. Now, I'm not preaching this to any one person who has fallen because I don't really know anybody in the sight of my eyes that has fallen. Uh, but I know that your turn is coming because we all have our turn. I'm just grateful it's not all at the same time. Yeah. I'm grateful for that. Now, it would be make a, a pastor a tough job to have the whole church fall all at once. To, to reach everyone and to put a mechanism to, to try to help everyone would be difficult. But God knows what he's doing. God's not going to give us more than we can handle. I believe that the Lord has spoken to us tonight. <coughs> I, want not, I want now to give you an opportunity to come and pray. These altars are open. And we're going to fellowship with the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Love the Lord. Submit to the Lord, understanding that sometimes, sometimes it might be hard, sometimes it might hurt, sometimes it might be painful, sometimes, sometimes, but hold on, it's not going to last.